Now, when you were standing with your firearm pointing to the toilet door, what emotions did you experience? I was terrified. Um, I feared for my life. I was scared. I was thinking about what could happen to me, to Riva. I was, I was just extremely fearful. Overcome with um, a sense of terror and vulnerability. Could you please repeat that? I'm sorry, it was just. I beg your pardon. I said it was complete terror and just a feeling of uh, help, <laughs> helplessness, not having anything to be able to to do, my lady, not being able to defend myself. what's happening but um, uh, Rian van Heer is actually getting frustrated because I'm not really answering his question. In a way I am answering it but I'm giving him a, a long sort of background and so what he's really looking for which I realized what he's really looking for is the trigger the the, the moment that that sort of set off this chain of events and um, you know and that, and that was a much shorter story and there's also a much shorter um, thing that happened on the 14th of February so so um, yeah and the interesting thing was when I when I mentioned it um, uh, Pete Baylor felt um, uh, agreed that, that that was actually quite likely it was a moment of validation for me which is also quite a good thing
Why can't you buy his story? What's, what's wrong with that story? I, I, I agree with um, Pete that, that it's premeditated as well. Um, it's not months of premeditation or even hours. It's, it's a couple of maybe seconds. It was a long argument that they were having. You, you really think how things can escalate in that time. Yeah. I think uh, what's also very important to remember is if, if Oscar is guilty, and you need to come up with a version where you're innocent. You, you need to kind of invert all the information. So, so Reba's no longer the victim, you're the victim. Yeah. Um, Reba's not the one who's terrified, you're the one who's terrified. Reba's not the yeah. one who was screaming, you were the one who screamed. So everything gets inverted. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Let's see what Pete has to say. Pete, why, why are okay. you not buying the story that you, you thought it's an intruder behind the door? Come on. Right, but yes, and that's where the funniest part of it, or not the funniest, it's... My objective in this whole situation, as they say, at the end of the judge, still to the judge to decide. The different is my side concerned. There must have been an argument. Mm. These two witnesses at least heard some, some screaming afterwards and so on. Why would the person staying there, with, she knows him, the outlay, the flats have been there before. Why would you go into a toilet, lock yourself in, and she had a cell phone with her? I'm convinced she wanted to make, make a phone call, maybe to seek for help, and that's why. He started firing shots. If I would, if there was a intruder, I can assure you, if I was alone in my house and my wife's lying next to my bed, my first concern would have been my wife, her safety. Yeah. If there was a intruder in my house, but Jen, it doesn't gel completely up to me. Yeah. There was definitely the motor was, as far as I'm concerned, if there, it's been found by the judge as well. The motor was definitely to kill her because, due to the fact she was making, maybe seeking for help. That's why she took herself and with her, and also luck into the bedroom, Nick, in a bathroom. Yeah. Nick, any sympathy with Oscar? Come on. You should have a little sympathy with the guy. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I have too much sympathy. I, you know, I respect his rise to fame, but I, but I don't have too much sympathy with. I literally think he he after that first shot there was a there was a moment where he he, he was maybe shocked by what he'd done and I think in that moment um, you know I think the trigger was the phone call but after that I think he he made a decision where he said well you know I'm 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 gonna trade your life for for my sort of brand life and 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 the money and all that kind of thing and. Yeah, I don't have any sympathy for that because, I mean, that's putting money in front of the, the, a, a lot. The uh, bottom line is how important validation is. And I can imagine yes, yes. if you if you have no legs, you grow up like that. Validation from people is extremely important to you. And yeah, uh, yeah, in my mind, you know, if, if the whole world worships you and one person says, well, I don't agree with what you're doing and I, you know, I, and you can't win my heart, the impact must be devastating on that person, eh? No, for sure. Um, what's difficult to convey very quickly, like on, on a radio show where you're talking a couple of seconds or whatever, is the, the long run-up. Um, you know, interestingly, Barry Rue talked about a, a slow burn. And, and again, it's an inversion. He, he's trying to say that Oscar's been abused his whole life. Again, it's an inversion of the truth. Um, you know, Reva, we know, was actually, she was in an abusive relationship herself. And, um, you know, the slow burn was really that argument which got worse and worse and worse and, and uh, you know. So, so, but the part that I want to mention quickly is when you study Oscar like a long, long period and you go into all the detail, you actually realize how long this whole process of validation was going on. And when you look at the, the whole narrative of wanting to compete against able-bodied athletes, that, that entire narrative is, 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 is um, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to validate myself as a, kind of like Pinocchio as a, as a real boy. I'm, I'm trying to say, you know, I'm just like you. And I think we all got a huge shock when we saw him in that video where he was running on, on stunts and he was, he was very short and he was kind of a little bit clumsy. And, you know, one of the ways women find men attractive is, is they need to be tall, I guess, you know, tall, dark and handsome. And, and if you're not... You know, if you never see someone in that, that thing, it's, it's quite a shock, you know. Quick, quick uh, final question to Pete. Pete, uh, this incident happened. Uh, Oscar came to you. What would your advice have been before the, the lawyers got involved? Well, I, quite frankly, I would have treated him with respect, as I did with all the people I put behind bars. <laughs> I can assure you. Yes. I, know, I can assure you. <laughs> yes. Secondly, I would have got my, all my facts on that percent in front of me. Yeah. About the case itself, I would have done my homework. 100% the crime scene itself, circumstance, also the background of Oscar itself, the so-called suspect. And I would have had my facts on the table if I started questioning. And also, of course, definitely, 
I would have given him an opportunity to speak to a lawyer. But I just want to highlight one thing. I was in a situation, if my life was my life was one stake, but also was in danger. And I can assure you, I finished, I fired all my shots out of my gun. Uh -huh. Why only fired four shots? That's, see, that's, my, that's my concern, sir. Okay. Now, there we go. Listen, Nick, we're going to give away a couple of copies of your books. We'll tell people how to win that in a couple of seconds. Nice talking to you. Yeah, good speaking to you, too. Go yeah, well, Nick. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> so, 11th of September, you say you know what is going to happen. I've got a strong feeling. I'm not the judge, but uh, I'm convinced. I right. think there's going to be a conviction, definitely. Premeditated. So I'm full of hope. But as I say, I'm not the judge, but I feel confident, premeditated. Okay. We're all good luck, Pete. By the way, Pete, to compliment your breakfast. Thanks, Pete. Oh, thank you. 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 Did you consciously pull the trigger or not? No, my lady, I didn't think about pulling the trigger. As soon as I heard the noise, before I could think, I, I pulled the trigger, my lady. That you pulled the trigger? That's correct, my lady. Episode, I in part five of the previous episode I um, touched on briefly that I was going through a very difficult time prior to writing these books and, and part of it was this um, almost like a, not an identity crisis but struggling to know um, what to do you know I was, I was actually struggling a little bit financially and I was about to make a complete career change into uh, from writing to financial planning and uh, I went to see a life coach and he said something really interesting he said um, we were speaking about quite a few personal things and one of the things he said was you can validate yourself which I, which I found really um, revolutionary in a way and he basically said that uh, and I, my argument with him was, well, how can you validate yourself? That don't, surely you need to pay attention to what other people think of you. And, you know, within the context of the Oscar trial, what's really interesting with that is to the extent that Oscar's trying to validate himself through the approval of, of the world, the media, scientists, other athletes, uh, ordinary people. You know, a, a lot of that has been about val validation. So that, that came across quite strongly in the, um, in the narrative, in the interview. So um, I'm going to touch on that in more detail in the next episode, which is um, uh, Revelations, which is the fourth book uh, Lisa and I wrote together on the Oscar trial.